uh, ranking task. Uh, learning to rank is very useful for many applications, such as uh, recommended system and information retrieval, or even natural language processing. And we can take some examples. And the first is this is uh, Amazon. And uh, when you log into Amazon account, you will find there are some uh, parts that are named recommended for you. And it depends on uh, what you buy, what you bought, and what you will recently, and it will show you some recommendation. <coughs> And this is my, this is a screenshot of my Amazon account. You can find that since I bought a, a toothbrush head for my electronic toothbrush, and it will recommend some toothpaste and uh, toothbrush. And then the next example is about the information retrieval. And everyone, every day, maybe use Google. And the way you input, such as the information retrieval and the click search, and it will return uh, many results that are relevant to uh, information retrieval. Uh, the first uh, results are always the most relevant page. And uh, how to get the relevant pages or how to rank it is also a ranking problem. Another example is in the drug discovery. And uh, there are millions of structures in a chemical laboratory. And uh, how do we identify the most promising ones? Uh, I chose the last example in the bioinformatics. Uh, we can use the ranking problem method to identify genes or protein structures that are relevant to a disease. Uh, next, Song Hong will talk about the, the uh, uh, typical method of the ranking problem in details. Okay, I will introduce a more rigorous and mathematical way in describing our problem. First is the notation. You have a sort of uh, a set of query. Uh, say, for example, uh, we have taken statistical learning in the center, and you can uh, and you may use lasso or SVM and so on. <coughs> and next, if you are searching a specific query in the uh, library system. And may give you a set of documents re re relative to your query. For example, if you use Lasso, you may have such papers. And <coughs> next is the labels. It's an underground tool of the relevance uh, between the specific. Uh, between Q, D, and Y. So we use a feature vector which just compiles our document and the query pairs to some numerical value. Okay, now it's the learning task. Uh, since this is a statistical learning problem, so we need something to learn. It's a training set. We can express it in that, that way. We have a query QI and a set of documents related to QI, and also a label assigned to the set of documents. And also from our feature function, we can change our training set into this way. And next is the ranking model. It's just a, a learner that can make our, uh, making our feature to some relevance, and then we can use the, uh, those relevance to give a rank. Okay, so that's the summary of the, what, what the rank problem is. It's just find a permutation of the, uh, the number size, and, and then give the rank of the document size. And this one is a summary picture of this one. Here is our training set, and we can learn.
learn through some algorithm, and we can learn uh, uh, a scoring function. And then C and Q M plus one is our test set. Then we can use S and the test set is the score related to our test set. <coughs> okay, and there are mainly three different kinds of uh, approaches to uh, study our problem. The first one is pointwise approach. And the input is the feature X and output is the relevant degree. And we can treat it as in least square estimation, we we mean minimize the summation of residual. Uh, it's just like a pointwise uh, approach, yeah. Because <coughs> we just consider uh, some specific and, and uh, ground true value and some heated value. But there is a limitation in the pointwise approach. It's uh, ignore the group structures among the documents. Next is a pairwise approach. And we can see that the input and output is. And here I want to introduce a concept called the Kendall's Hall and it will be used in our later coding example. So the population version of Kendall's Hall is that uh, first we have x, y disjointed distributed with some distribution function <coughs> and tall is And then we can make a simple version of that. It's just an estimation of Kendall's hall. Is that the number of co concordant, uh, concordant, yeah, concordant tiles. divided by the total number of tiles is just n times n minus one divided by two. It's easy to see that we have y1 to yn and a, uh, a predict value of y1 to yn. For the first one we have n and the second for y2 we have n minus one so take the sum we get the, this number. And the next approach is a listwise approach. It can uh, involve the group structure in our loss function. Uh, yeah, and next I will introduce two specific kind of uh, learning approach. The first one is a kind of pointwise approach. It's called OCSVM. And here, uh, it's just like a general SVM problem and we can write the uh, the optimization problem in a specific way. And I will give you a 